Sir, the floor is yours, man. Okay, thank you very much. Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining uh, Azure Power Lunch, uh, and happy Friday, by the way. So today our topic is uh, uh, Azure Search, and let me share my slide deck here. Give me one second. All right, perfect. So today our topic is Azure Search, and before we dive into the uh, into Azure Search, I would like to share some of the updates. Uh, from the last week, as you all know, Azure is, uh, uh, you know, updates pretty fast. So we have several great announcements that uh, uh, happened last week. Uh, so one, I'm not going to share all of them, but a few important ones. The so one, one is actually Azure Event Grid uh, is now generally available uh, in uh, following regions. Uh, so if you all know that, as you know, uh, Azure Event Grid is. Uh, is a fully managed intelligent event routing service. So, if you are writing a new cloud native applications, you know event based uh, uh, event based programming model is is probably a key construct of uh, cloud native applications. And uh, uh, event grid is one of the great services that uh, that can help you achieve uh, event based uh, you know, publisher and subscriber uh, uh, kind of a design pattern. Uh, so this was the one update. The second one is. Uh, we have uh, we now Azure Cloud Shell is providing Ansible uh, already installed in Azure Cloud Shell. So Ansible is uh, kind of a uh, IT automation engine uh, uh, that can automate cloud provisioning and configuration management. And now it is available uh, through Azure Cloud Shell, as well as we have also introduced Ansible extension uh, for VS Code. So right now, as you can see. Uh, just just a quick demo. I'm at shell.azure.com. So uh, people who don't know that, uh, you can now uh, reach to Azure Cloud Shell directly through shell.azure.com, and you can pick up your uh, language of choice, Bash or PowerShell. So here I selected Bash, and I can see Ansible version here. So I have not installed anything. So as you can see, Ansible is already installed and configured and ready to go in my cloud shell. So this is pretty uh, pretty neat. A lot of customers are using Ansible for uh, for their configuration management and cloud provisioning. So another update is uh, uh, virtual network service endpoint and firewalls for Azure Storage is now GA'd. Uh, so as you know, Azure Storage is a public cloud service, uh, and but however. A uh, lot of customers wanted to kind of uh, provide a, another layer of security on top of uh, Azure Storage and Azure SQL. So last year we have announced the Azure SQL and Stor Azure Storage uh, service, uh, virtual network service endpoint uh, and firewall in private uh, in the public preview. And now uh, we, recently we have announced the GA for uh, uh, virtual network service endpoint uh, firewall for Azure Storage. So now as you can see, uh, you can actually restrict a uh, virtual network, uh, a subnet inside a virtual network to only access the Azure storage account. And you can uh, you can configure that through um, uh, service endpoints on your virtual network. Also, you can uh, also whitelist the public IP address on your Azure storage so that uh, if you want, if, if an enterprise wants to access the Azure storage, uh, they can they can add, access Azure Storage through those public IPs, and no one else can uh, get in the Azure Storage from outside of those public IP ranges that you whitelist here. So uh, these were a few updates uh, uh, that kind of caught my eye, and it seems pretty interesting to me. So let's now let's start uh, and go ahead in Azure Search. So uh, as many of us use several applications, you know, whether it's a mobile app or it's a, it's a web app, you know, we go to shop online on Amazon.com or Best Buy.com, and every time uh, we see a search interface. So, uh, so, so technically, search is a very uh, important uh, aspect of your application. Uh, so, and now if you're building your own applications, uh, of course, your users are expecting you to have some kind of search inbuilt. Uh, on your application. Uh, so Azure Search is a completely uh, managed search service that is hosted uh, hosted by Azure. Uh, so today we are going to talk about Azure Search. And just to let you all know, 
uh, if you all are familiar with Elasticsearch. So Azure and Elasticsearch, both in the background uses Lucene engine, search engine, and they both are kind of similar because they both support Lucene query syntax and uh, all the uh, all the kind of uh, yeah, they, they built on top of Lucene, so it's pretty powerful uh, the way that you can scale and uh, create indexes. So we will go through some of these features here in this demo. So I'm on uh, Azure portal, and it's it, it's pretty simple. You can quickly create a resource and say, hey, uh, I want to provision a, um, Azure search. So you can say. Azure search and uh, there you go so you can quickly provision an Azure search service uh, I have already provisioned one uh, uh, in advance to show you here so let me walk through Azure search service that I have already provisioned all right so uh, this is uh, I am in a resource group I've created a resource group or Azure Power Lunch, and inside my resource group, I have provisioned the Azure uh, search service called Azure Power. So this is my search service. Uh, so basically, this is a full text search, and it provides you a lot, lot more features uh, of full text search. As you, if you go to, like I said, if you go to any of the e-commerce sites, and you start to search. Uh, there are several things that kind of uh, makes your user interface much more uh, simpler and easier. Uh, this, for example, type ahead. So if you are trying to search a product, uh, the search interface actually provides you some suggestions. Uh, so, like, so this is a demo of Azure Search, uh, and I will I will show you the uh, uh, the kind of insights of this demo uh, later in this. Uh, uh, in the session, but just uh, some features like like I mentioned, type ahead. So if you see that, if I type analyst, you can see I'm getting all these suggestions, and they all are directly coming from Azure Search. So this is one feature, pretty important for any kind of search engine uh, that is out of the box provided you uh, from Azure Search. The second thing is uh, facets. So uh, if you go to all these search engines, you can see all these get filters and facets. So you can see uh, here in my site, I see the facets are business title, and I can see there are jobs uh, for summer summer college interns. And this is a portal based on some of the old job data, uh, uh, which I am showing here. So this facet has 12 jobs in it. So now I can click and I can filter filter further in that and uh, see the job listings. I don't know, for some reason, there is no analyst job, so it didn't show me. So all this is provided you uh, provided to you out of the box through Azure Search. And not only that, Azure Search also supports uh, geospatial searching. So I can fire up the searches like, hey, uh, give me the jobs for all the analytics jobs within the 10, uh, 10 miles of my zip code and things like that. So I can do geospatial search in Azure Search, and this is out of the box. Uh, it provides me that out of the box. Uh, relevancy and ranking. So this is also a pretty important feature. You know, depending on how you configure it, uh, there is a default ranking uh, profile in Azure Search that you can use, which actually uh, depends on the word counts and uh, several other properties of a document that it cracks open. But you can provide your own relevancy. Uh, uh, configuration to Azure Search and it can it can use that. So here, like you can see, the relevancy is salary. You can you can pick up salary high to low or low to high. It's going to uh, kind of show you those results. And then there's a paging. So all these features that you see on this page are actually uh, out of the box provided uh, by Azure Search. Now let me go ahead and show you how this is done. So I'm I'm, I'm back on my portal. And uh, so one of the important concept of any search is actually indexing or crawling, the, uh, indexing the content, right? Uh, so you can have uh, different content sources, uh, but to get the data out of those content sources, you have to index them. Now, once you index uh, data, uh, those indexes are stored in memory on your search engine. So in our case, our search engine is Azure Search. So here. Uh, you can create different indexes by uh, either 
pulling the data out of the data sources or pushing the data in your index. So here I'm going to show you an example of how you can pull data or how you can crawl data out of a uh, existing data source. So I'm in Azure Search, I click on import data, and here I can connect it to a data source. So these are out of the box uh, data sources that Azure provides you. Uh, and I, I think we have also added, uh, recently added support for Azure Cosmos DB, uh, which I don't see here, but, uh, but we, uh, well, it is, there is a document DB, but it should be Cosmos DB. So now here I'm going to pick up a sample, and uh, there is a Azure SQL database uh, that's in my sample. It's called Real Estate US Sample. So I can pick up that, and I'm telling my Azure Search uh, to crawl or to index the data in my Azure SQL database. So I select data source and then I can configure my index settings here. All right, let's give it a second because it is uh, uh, what SharePoint, uh, what Azure Search is doing is actually uh, pulling the index and, and pulling the data and kind of trying to figure out the index schema for you. So as you can see, uh, it, it is uh, search is providing me recommendation for my index schema, and uh, it is saying uh, it is this is the default schema that it pulled out of my Azure SQL. So here I can add more fields, I can change schema, uh, but it, this is this is something that Azure Search provided me, and now you can see there are different uh, different attributes for these fields like retrievable, uh, filterable, sortable. Uh, facetable and searchable. So these are very common attributes. If you have worked on any kind of, uh, uh, with any kind of search engines, these are very common attributes. Retrievable, retrievable means that when a user is searching for, uh, for a term, uh, this property, which is marked as retrievable, will show in their search results. The same thing is, uh, so, so filterable is user will be able to filter on these properties. Uh, sortable means user will be able to sort on these properties. Uh, and then uh, same way as uh, facetable means, uh, as you saw in my left map, there were some facets. So uh, these properties uh, will be facetable. And searchable means these are uh, the properties where the term will be searched actually. So these are the full text search uh, 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 that all these, all these uh, properties will be search, but I mean, a property could be searchable, but not retrievable or not facetable. So now analyzers, uh, so every index or once uh, when, uh, uh, when your properties crawled, uh, when a document, or in this case, uh, Azure SQL database uh, is actually crawled, uh, after that you can, you can have different kind of uh, a stemming and word breaking, and based on, uh, there are different linguistic support for that. So Microsoft provides uh, out of the box linguistic support for word breaking and stemming for different languages. Uh, so as you can see, in my this, uh, this database, there is a description field, and this field has uh, support for multiple languages. And uh, for each language, uh, we have picked up an analyzer, a Microsoft default out of the box analyzer for that particular language. So, uh, so if you if you want to do more customization, you can write your own analyzer, then you can provide your own analyzers to Azure, Azure search, and then the, uh, the word breaking and the uh, analysis of your search will be based on your analyzer. Okay, so now uh, once, you have, uh, once you have created this, uh, you can say, okay, my indexing is created. Uh, now you can go ahead and crawl it. So let me give a new name uh, because I already have one to show you. So I said, okay, so this is real estate, your sample one, I can click okay. Now my validation is successful and it can now import data. Uh, okay, so it will, uh, I, I want to give a name. And so right now, I am not scheduling it, but you can also schedule uh, the crawl. That's called the incremental crawl. So this is right now, it's gonna do a full crawl. However, if you want to crawl uh, a data source based on uh, like, uh, uh, based on incremental time duration, you need to have a property which will be date time property 
uh, are kind of uh, like a date change or time change property. And uh, once you have that property, uh, Azure Search will index the incremental crawl based on that property. But in my data source, I don't have any of that kind of property. That's why I'm getting this message. And I'm not able to schedule it based on a certain like once daily or hourly. So right now what I'm doing is a full crawl. Uh, okay, so I set up a crawl. I do a full crawl. Uh, and now my Azure search is going to go uh, and read or crawl all the documents out of my Azure SQL data sample data source and add it to the search indexer. And once my data is added in my search indexer, I should be able to fire up my search queries uh, based on that indexer. So as you can see here, uh, real estate, US sample one, right now there are zero documents. It, 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 it's going to take maybe some time, five minutes or so to crawl it. But uh, just for the sake of this uh, uh, session, I have already crawled it uh, before and it's stored in a real estate US sample uh, index. So this is my index. So uh, I'm, I'm using some terms here. So now one of the term I use is indexer. So indexer is actually your crawler uh, that goes out and crawl the data. Index is where the all the data, uh, once it is crawled and kind of word broken and optimized for search, it is stored in the indexes. Uh, so this, uh, this is uh, my index, which is already created. Uh, now, one of the advantage of using Azure Search is actually uh, scaling out uh, your, uh, uh, your schema. So, uh, or sorry, scaling out your search service. So depending on the number of queries or number of users hitting your search, uh, there, might be, uh, there might be chances that you have to create multiple uh, replicas. So, uh, Lucene, that's the basic concept of Lucene search engine. Uh, so the same like Elastic follows the same. So Elastic, Elastic search and Azure search follow the same concept uh, of replicas and partitions. Uh, and actually, most of the NoSQL databases follow the similar kind of scaling model, uh, which is like replicas and partitions. So in Azure search also, you can scale your index and you can create multiple replicas or multiple partitions. If you need more I.O. or more storage, you will create more partitions. But if you need uh, better query performance, then you will create more re replicas. Replicas always also give you uh, more kind of a HA functionality because the, the complete index, all the data in the index is written into multiple replicas. So right now I have two replicas here. Uh, so that means that I'm getting 99%, 99.9% availability guarantee in these two replicas. And also my queries will be faster because my query load will be balanced across these two replicas. Uh, I can create more partition, but uh, only if I need to, uh, to kind of store, I need more IO or more storage. Then only I will create more partition. That means that every index has a capacity uh, in terms of storage, so if I feel like that, hey, uh, I am going to, uh, I am going to store more, uh, more than that capacity, I will create more partitions. And every time you create a partition, uh, that is multiplied by the replicas in terms of scale units. So, uh, let's say if I have two partitions and two replicas, means I have four scale units, and you will be charged based on the number of scale units. So this is how I can scale my Azure search, as you can see here. Uh, now let let me go back to my indexer and just see if my indexing is finished. So as you can see, my crawl is completed now. And in my real estate US sample one, I have 4,959 uh, records. So these are all the documents. Uh, well, in search terms, everything is a document. So whether you are crawling a, a blob from the blob storage or you're crawling an Azure SQL database, it's all is JSON document. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, so we have uh, technically 5,000, approximately 5,000 documents. Now let's go ahead and just see how some of the queries work. Uh, so I can go here and I can say, hey, take me to Search Explorer. And this is a place where I can do some kind of testing of my queries. 
so let me run some queries. So a simple query will be uh, search equals Seattle. So now you can see this is the real state data. So it is showing me all the uh, results that are returned from my query as a search equals Seattle. So you can see uh, uh, this, this, these are individual documents or listing IDs. So this listing has three bedrooms, two bathrooms, blah, blah, and all the description in different languages uh, and other properties, including uh, location, which we will see in our, geo this will, we will use in our geospatial search. So this is, this is a simple query. Now you can go more complex on your queries and you can uh, fire up a query like this. Say, hey, search equals Seattle and count equal true. So it's gonna give me the total number of results and uh, top, it's gonna give me top 100 results. So as you can see, uh, it is giving me a document count, which is like uh, 1808. So it's searching all the documents where uh, it finds the term Seattle and it is uh, showing me the top 100 documents, but it's telling me that, hey, you have total 1,800 documents where the term Seattle uh, was found. So as you can see, this is so quick, right? I mean, think about firing up this query in one of your uh, non-relational or, you know, relational databases. It might, uh, it might take time and you'll have to do some work to write these kind of queries. Now, search is pretty fast in terms of, because it's, uh, it's in memory in, and, uh, it can do really, really fast uh, queries. So now another complex query here, as you can see, search is Seattle, and now I'm using filter, uh, and I'm saying where, give me all the results where the bedrooms are greater than three. So this is giving me all these results here. Uh, so yeah, pr pretty interesting. Uh, uh, you, if, you, if, you, if you know how to do Lucene queries, it follow Lucene query syntax, and you can do a lot of complex uh, queries. Now here, I'm saying, hey, my search ter term is uh, granite countertop and highlight the description. So if you go to some of those searches, search engine you might see that the search terms are highlighted whenever it is found. So here you can provide that, hey, highlight me the property description. And here, if you see the description, which is written out of in my JSON, uh, it is giving me emphasis on the word countertop, on the word granite. So this is the way the highlighting is done. Uh, all right, let me take a quick pause here and just see if you all can hear me or. Uh, so okay, so there is a there is a question like, can we index a public URL? Uh, so the answer is no. So right now you cannot index a public URL through Azure Search. Uh, however, you can actually. Uh, crawl the HTML document. So you can, uh, you can have the HTML uh, pages in blob storage and you can crawl it. Uh, but I have seen some, this, this feature request is pretty, uh, has lots of vote in our user wise. So not really sure, but uh, you might see this feature going forward, but now you cannot crawl it. If you want to crawl the public URL, maybe you'll have to look at some other searches. Uh, the other question is, is there a way to restrict to authenticated consumers. So this is uh, this is another question, good question. So when you, uh, Scott, when you say authenticated consumer means uh, uh, you want to do security trimming in the search? Sure, or only just make sure that people that aren't logged into your website can't go query the search results, which would contain information from your database. Um, Yes, exactly. Because uh, so to query this information, you have to provide a key, and there's a client key or query key. So that was my question. Okay. So if you don't have that key, you cannot actually query. And for security trimming, we 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 actually support the IP-based security trimming. So, uh, but a lot of logic you'll have to provide in your document or content. Uh, however, uh, you know, once user can provide its identity, we can do the trimming based on that user ID. Can we index local folder or SharePoint folder? Right now, uh, you cannot uh, index. Uh, well, actually, if you want to index local or share, local folder, you'll have to upload it to Blob Storage. Uh, for SharePoint folder, you'll have to use some kind of connectors because out of the box, uh, as I have shown you, actually, you go back here. So out of the box, we don't have a connector 
SharePoint. Um, however, you can uh, you can push, you can use the push model. So by using uh, some kind of uh, APIs, uh, you you can you can use SharePoint APIs to pull the documents, convert that into the JSON, push that JSON to uh, uh, to Azure Search. But out of the box, uh, we don't have the connector for SharePoint. So uh, let's see. If I go to import data, these are the connectors. Far we have these connectors. Uh, Azure SQL, SQL Server on Azure VM, Document DB, which will be our Cosmos DB, Log Spread, and Azure Table Storage. Anything else, you'll have to do the push, your JSON doc. I hope that answers your question. Uh, in fact, so uh, moving forward, to show you uh, some more. So I'm hearing a kind of a disturbance. Are you all, uh, can you all hear me fine? Yeah, man, I can hear you fine. By the way, we only have three minutes. Okay, so uh, I think I have covered most of the stuff. This one thing I wanted to show you all that I uh, I have set up this demo and this was uh, this was a pretty quick. So if you all are interested, you can go to GitHub and download uh, and clone this uh, this repo. And once you clone the repo, it can upload, it can, this repo can upload documents for you, then uh, set up uh, this uh, uh, project for you. So I opened that, I cloned this in Visual Studio, and it was like maybe it took me 15 minutes to set this up. And uh, uh, basically, uh, you, you can set this up and watch this. Now, one important thing, so you can use Fiddler actually to learn a lot about these queries. Let me go ahead and find, so my, this application is running. Now let's say if I search for analyst. So, so you see that analyst, this was a type ahead suggestion. Now if I go to my Fiddler, and, uh, so you see this term that's called uh, um, home suggest and term equals ANA. And uh, you, you can see, uh, let me show you raw. So this, this has fired this kind of a query. And in my response, I get the JSON back. And these are the four suggestions that, that was returned from that query. So the same way you can, uh, you can see um, all these. You can apply the filter. And like when you apply the filter, it will again fire up this query. You can see these facets are returned. So these are the same facets that you, you see in your left hand band. Uh, and this is the this is complete query for you. So you can you can take this query and you can uh, go back to your search console and you can run the same query uh, from search console to kind of validate your results here in your Azure search. Okay, perfect. So I just have one more minute. Uh, uh, let's see if we have any questions. All right, perfect. So uh, I don't see any questions. Navid, have I missed any questions? 